my good. Contending for your vision. Contending for your dreams or contending for your vision. And I will read Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And the Bible says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he may run that readed it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Amen. So what is a vision? What is a dream? It's a clear, vivid imagination of the future. A clear and vivid imagination of the future. It is the anticipated state of tomorrow. What you're believing to have tomorrow, what you're looking forward to, what you're walking towards, that's your vision, that's your dream. Dreams and visions constitute your aspirations for the future. It constitutes your aspirations for the future, for tomorrow. Most of us seated here this morning, we have visions, we have dreams. We have visions and dreams for our lives, our marriages, our businesses. We have visions where we want to take our businesses to in the next couple of years. We have vision for our homes, for our children, the kind of school we want them to attend, and possibly the kind of course we want them to study in school. We have vision for your family, your career. I want to be a top, at the top managerial level in the next two, three years. This is the vision I have for my life. Single people have visions. Married people have visions. We all have different kinds of visions. And I'm praying for you today that whatever vision you have that aligns with the word of God, that the almighty God will bring it to pass. Amen. I said the almighty God will bring it to pass. Amen. But then regrettably, some of us don't even have dreams. Some don't even have visions. Some are not even bothered about what's going to happen in the future. They just live by the day. Some just wake up and tell you, let's take each day as it comes. Some don't even see anything going to happen ahead. Some start a business, they don't have the vision, even any vision for the business. Some are working, they don't have any vision or dreams as pertaining to their jobs. Some don't even have dreams for their children. Don't even have any vision concerning the children. Where you want them to study, what kind of, what, what, what kind of life you want them to lead or to live afterwards. People don't even have visions. And there are two categories of people that fall into that, into, that, into that category. Two classes of people that fall into that category. Number one are those who don't even have any dream at all. Who have never dreamed in their lives. They just wake up and they leave. And you'll be amazed that such people exist and even in church. They just wake up in the morning, they go to work, they come back in the evening, they watch TV the next day. The same, same, same old, same old. And they just carry on like that. No vision, no dreams, nothing. There are people like that who have never dreamed. And there are people who don't dream anymore. Why? Because of the vicissitudes of life. They dreamed and some things happened and they just gave up on their dreams and they abandoned their dreams. Some thought that by now they would have graduated from school. But then things happened and threw them out of school. Some things happened along the line. Some thought by now this would have happened, that would have happened. I would have been at this level in my office. But then something happened that just overturned and upturned all of your plans and all of your dreams and visions and you abandoned it. If you fall into any of those categories, I'm praying for you that today you will dream again. Amen. I say you will dream again Amen. in the name of Jesus. Because the truth of the matter is that God wants us to dream. He wants us to have vision. The scripture we read, which uh, Pastor Musa read upside and down, back and forth. <laughs> Joseph dreamed. And God gave him the dream. God gave him the dream. Because God wanted Joseph to know what lay ahead of him. He wanted him to have a glimpse of the future. He wanted him to know what is going to happen. What I am going to do for you in your life. That was what God did for Joseph. And God gave him a clear dream of what he was going to do. So God wants us to have dreams and imaginations. He wants us to have vision as, from, as long as we live. The scripture we read in Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch. 
And I will hear what he will say to me. He will say, this is the vision. Write it. That he may run. That read it. Write it. This is the vision. This is what I want to do in your life. This is where you're going to be in 10 years and 20 years and 30 years. This is what I want for you. God wants us to have a vision. And if you remember, if you're a student of the scriptures, you will know that when Abraham was without a child and he was lamenting to God that I go without a child. So my hair this, uh, will now become Eliezer who is a servant in my own house. One very night, God woke him up and said, come outside. He came out and God said, look up. He looked up and he saw stars and God said, can you count the stars? He looked up and he couldn't count and God said, so innumerable are your descendants going to be. God gave him a, a vision of what his future was going to be, what the future held for him. And I believe that from that time on, Abraham's faith became strengthened more than ever before that the promised child was going to come. Because he has seen the vision clearly. That his descendants were going to be numerable like the sand of the sea and then as the stars in the sky. So God intends for us to have visions. And the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, gives us raw materials to dream with. The Bible gives us the raw materials that we require to dream with. If you study the scriptures, there are so many things in the Bible that you can use to dream to envision how your future is going to be. I'm going to just give you a few before we move on. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 10. The Bible said, Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, that they shall eat the fruit of their doings. It shall be well with him. That is a raw material for you to envision your future, that it will be well with me. It is going to be well with me. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what's happening now. It doesn't matter how topsy toughy things are at the moment. It will be well with me. That is what the Bible says. God has given you that raw material to be able to think of how your future will be. To dream what is going to happen in the future. That child might be giving you problems, but it shall be well in the future. The business might not have stabilized, but it will be well. My finances might be going through a rough patch, but it will be well. Because that's what God has said. So the Bible gives us the raw materials to dream. And anybody who studies the Bible and meditates on it is a dreamer. You will always dream dreams. Beautiful dreams. You always see visions about how your tomorrow is going to be. That's why it's impossible for you to be negative. It's impossible for you to be negative. Because when you are dreaming from the word of God, you know that it will be all right. Someone approached me sometime, I think that was last year. And accused me. And I said, each time you come here, you just preach. I said, this thing is just simple. Life is just easy. Life is, you don't even, don't even have challenges. Then I said, listen. And I gave him an answer. I said, whenever I come here, I don't come here to share my experiences. Because we all have negative experiences. I'm not coming here to share mine. You have yours. What I come here to do is to share the word of God. Which is the word of life. And which is the word that gives hope. And if the word of God does not give life and inspire hope, then that is not the word of God. If there's anything at all I have to share about me, it has to be a testimony. Because whatever must come from this pulpit must be that which edifies, not that which brings you down. It should edify. So when we talk as if things are just easy, it doesn't mean it's so rosy for everybody. But we are believing God. That's what God says. And we are standing on the word of God. Jeremiah 17, 7. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out his truth by the river and shall not see when he cometh. For her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That's another raw material to dream with. If you're starting a business, that's a raw material to dream with. My business shall be like it is planted by the rivers of water. I'm going to grow like a tree. I'm going to have branches all over. I'm going to be green all the time. I'm going to be fruitful in my business. That is a raw material to dream with. If you begin to envision that, if you use that as a raw material, you begin to see your business, you begin to grow, expand, and you begin to see that it will happen. The word of God is a raw material for dreams and for visions. 
He says you will bring forth fruits. You will be fruitful. You will not see when heat cometh. That is the word. It is a raw material for dreams and vision. Those who get disillusioned easily are those who do not get in the word. If you get in the word, you get excited irrespective of what's happening around you. You will get excited. Psalm 128, 1 to 3. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the fruit of thy hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife, for those of us who are not married, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants round about thy table. The picture is painted already of what to expect when you get into marriage. That's the raw material for your dream. Your wife will be fruitful. Fruitful in her body. Fruitful in her mind. Fruitful emotionally. That is it. From there you can begin to draw your vision. Begin to dream. That this is what I'm going to have. My children are going to be like olive plants round about my table. Healthy children. Flourishing children. The word of God is the raw material that you need to dream. It is the raw material you need to draw up your visions. But the problem is we are running away from the world, from the world. Running away from the world and then we are going to the news and getting disillusioned and getting discouraged. We are hearing what people are saying, but we don't want to listen to what God is saying. We can hear everybody listen to everybody else. We listen to the doctor, we listen to everybody else, listen to the meteorologist, listen to everybody else. But we never listen to what God is saying. And he's the one who is giving you the raw materials you need for your future. My son, attend to my words. Attend to my words. Meditate upon my word. And you will get a clear picture of what your tomorrow holds. Attend to my words and you will know what tomorrow will be. Attend to my words and you can craft your tomorrow. This is the raw material to craft your tomorrow. To craft your future. To mold it. This is the raw material. God even went ahead to give us a vision of what life will look after now. He went ahead to give you a vision of what heaven is like so that you will know by the time you, 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 you pass from here, of course at a ripe old age, nobody's dying young in the name of Jesus. At a ripe old age, when you go home, you know where you're going. He gave us a clear picture of heaven. Streets of gold. 24 elders. All the angels worshipping him, bowing before him. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. He gave us a clear picture of what happens in heaven. So you can envision it where you're headed when you're out of here. God loves for us to have vision. That's what he wants. But then the question is, must I have a vision? Must I have a vision? And I'll answer that and say, I don't know if you must. But I know you should. I know you should have a vision. I know you should have a dream. Because if you're not living for anything, your life is nothing. If there's nothing to die for, then there's no reason to live. So I think you should have a dream. And I'll give you reasons why. Number one, Matthew 15 and verse 14. The Bible says, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, the boat shall fall into a ditch. The worst kind of blindness is the blindness of the mind, not physical blindness. A lot of people are walking around, but they are blind. The worst kind of blindness is the blindness of the mind. The man does, who does not know where his future is headed. Who does not know what the future holds for him. Who does not know the destiny of his business. The destiny of his children that has been committed into his hands. That is a dangerous man to deal with. Because he's a blind man and he's headed to the ditch. Imagine being driven by a blind driver. Imagine being flown by a, a blind pilot. Where are you going to end up, God forbid? You would never let a blind person lead you. Never. 
So as a husband, how can you lead your home when you don't even have a vision? When all you do is say, let's, let's leave whatever as, the day, as it is. Whatever the day brings. Whatever the year brings. As a wife, how do you guide? How do you lead your children? You should have a vision for your home. As a business person, you should have a vision for your business. Whatever you do, you should have a vision. You should have a dream. Otherwise, you are blind. If you cannot see what the future holds, I'm telling you categorically, you are a blind man and you are a dangerous man. Because you're not even fit to lead yourself. That is something known as self-leadership. You cannot even lead yourself if you are blind. Otherwise, you will fall into a ditch. And so I'm asking you this morning, what is your vision for 2019? Where do you plan to be at the end of this year? What is your dream? What, do you, what are you expecting God to bring to pass? Yesterday at the minister's meeting, we were just discussing and talking about why there are just no, not much signs and wonders in the church. And one of the reasons preferred was that people come into church without expectation. It's, it has become a routine to come to church. In the month, Sunday morning, we go to church. It's a routine. But then some people, other people prepare. I'm going to meet the maker of the whole world, the king of all kings, and I'm expectant today. And those are the people that run away with the testimonies and with the miracles. So you need to prepare for the year. You need to have a vision. Where am I headed? By this first quarter, what am I? Don't bother whether it comes to pass or not. Have it first. Write it down first. Initiate it first. You did last year, it didn't come to pass. Do it again. Dream again. You planned it and something came and scuttled it. Plan again. Initiate it again. So what's your vision for your business? I'm asking you this morning. For this year. What's your vision for your home? What dreams do you have for your children? What dreams do you have? What visions do you have? And for our single ladies, please, I know you have a checklist. Have a checklist of the tall, dark, and handsome, broad shoulders, man. But please, add it to your checklist. He must have a vision. He should have a vision. So when he comes and says, babe, what's up? Ask him, guy, what's your vision? Otherwise, you enter a one-chance bus. Because a lot of ladies got into one-chance bus. A man that is going nowhere will drive you all around town. Because he doesn't have a destination. Wherever the darkness catches him, he sleeps there. He has no destination. So a lot of people have gotten into relationships that are headed nowhere. Even marriage relationships that are headed nowhere. So for those of us who are yet to get, get, get into it, ask the guy when he comes, what's your vision? What's your dream? What are you planning? What are your plans? How many children do you want to have? What do you want to do? How do you want to further your career? How do you want to grow your business? What are your plans? What do you have? What's your vision? And if he tells you God will provide, shift. shift. God will only supply when you have a vision. He gives you a dream, he funds it. He doesn't fund emptiness. He doesn't fund nothing. He funds what, when you have a dream, when you have a vision, he gives you and it aligns with his word, he funds it. So when you hear God will provide, that is a one chance boss. Don't get on it. The second reason why you should have a vision is because vision helps you to align your life. It helps you to get your life back on course, back on track. It helps you to align your life. That's what a vision does. Because when you know where you're going, you will, you will, you will plan how to get there. It's only a man that has a vision and a dream that has plans. You cannot make plans when there is no vision. Vision plan is when you break it down how to get there. That's a plan. That's how to get there. So when you have a vision and a dream, it helps you align. It helps you al align your life. It helps you plan your life. It helps you put your life in check. A man who has a dream for his children to attend Oxford 
will not be spending money anyhow, except you've not inquired about the school fees. So when you get to know what they pay in Oxford, you will align yourself. A man who wants to build a home this year will not collect his salary, put it on his card, and be going around ShopRite. You cannot be involved in impulsive buying. Why? Because there's a vision. You have something to achieve. It helps you align your life. That's why you should have a vision. You should have a dream. It helps you put your life in check. It helps you drop some mundane things that, are, that, that, that will just... Anything that will affect your vision and dream, you drop them off. That the Jesus said sometime, he said, why he doesn't involve himself with bickerings and responding to people who talk to him, who criticize him and all, is because where he's going is very far. Where he's going is, he doesn't have time for things that will pull him down, come and start hating, start replying, they said he does this, he did this, he didn't do that. There's no time for all of that. Where he's going is very far. The elders in my place, they have a saying, and you know when the elders speak, you listen. They said the madman said, I don't know when the madman said that, but that's what the elders say. That the madman said that there's no time. No time for nonsense. I have a lot of things to do. I'm going to dance in the market square. The children I want to chase are still waiting for me. I need to pursue them. There's no time. So when you have a vision and know where you're headed, there's no time. No time for envy, no time for bickering, no time for quarrel. Anything that will, that will reduce your dream, that will cost your dream or vision not to come to pass, you will drop it. You will drop it. That's no time. That's why you need to have a vision. It will help you align your life. You're planning to retire in a beautiful home by the seaside. Your yeah, spend it, your house to reduce now. You can't be eating Chinese every day and achieve that, except, of course, you know you're earning. Of course, you're earning maybe six digits. But if you're not earning up to that, and you eat Chinese every day, and you're planning to retire, a home beside the sea, you end up in the village. So, your vision will help you align your life. It will help keep your life in check. It will ask, act as a check to your life. This is what I want. This is what I want to achieve. Last year, December, when we went home, a, 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 a relative of mine, or a friend, dedicated and commissioned a very massive hotel accommodation. 58 rooms, massive and big. Everybody was rejoicing and dancing. But later on, I had the story of how that thing came to happen. He built that for 10 years. He lives in Canada. And while he was building it, my brother-in-law told me that this guy never changed his car. He was using a car, Toyota Yaris. That people were mocking him and saying, oh, go and buy moto. This, <laughs> he would just smile. Because he had the vision. He had something he was chasing. He had something he was pursuing. So all the other things, it didn't matter. He would buy a car for his wife, oh, but he was still driving that Yaris. In fact, they told him you have to embalm the Yaris. That's what you drove all through for 10 years. Your vision will keep your life in check because you know where you're headed. Today I'm praying for you that you will dream again. Amen. Not just will you dream, you will dream big. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your vision is a fuel to you to move on. It fuels you. Vision is an energy. Energy booster. Visions and dreams are very potent. So potent that they can energize the dreamer to achieve the dream. It fuels you to move on. You and I know that life never goes in a straight line. We meet obstacles here and there. We plan and life replans for us. Along the line, we meet, we meet obstacles. The children of Israel, they had a vision and a dream of getting to the promised land, but then there were a lot of obstacles along the way. From stubborn Pharaoh to the Red Sea 
to, 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 to the complaining in the wilderness, the murmurings and all that that Moses had to go through to entertain, to run in, into Mara, the, 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 the bitter waters, so many obstacles. But then they kept going. Moses kept taking this people because Moses has seen it. He has seen that there's a promised land somewhere and we just must get there. It is a fuel to you. That, that you will meet obstacles on the way. There will be issues that will cause you to want to abandon that dream. I said, this can work. There will be obstacles. There will be mountains on the way, on your path. That will tell you, no, you can't go any further. But the dream energizes you to keep going. The vision you have seen energizes you to keep going. So when you want to throw in the towel, you remember your children. Remember Oxford. Remember Harvard. You keep moving. Your vision drives you. It's a fuel. It's the energy you need. It's the energy booster you need to keep running. Even when things are going contrary. Even in the face of the storm, you're moving. And people are wondering. What's going on? Because he has seen something. There is something he's chasing. There is something he's chasing. They say a toad does not run in the, in the daytime for nothing. It's either something is chasing it or it is chasing something. So when you see a man running and running, there is something chasing him. And I can tell you, there's nothing that can chase you like your dream. If you have a dream, it will, help you. It will put you on your toes. It will get you up in the morning and it will get you going. Because I have to do this. I have to do this. So I'm praying for you this morning that the energy you need to realize your dreams, the Almighty God will give you. Amen. I said the strength you need to realize your dreams, the Almighty God will supply Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four. Your vision commits heaven. It commits heaven. Like I said, heaven does not pay for nothing. It doesn't fund nothingness. You have to bring a cup for God to fill before you can talk about a running over. Fill my cup. There has to be a cup first. There has to be a vision and a dream first before God can even fill it. Before you talk about running over. There has to be a vision. There has to be a dream. To commit to heaven. Your dreams and your visions commit to heaven to move on your behalf. It commits the integrity of God. Once it aligns with his word, he is committed to walk with you and bring it to pass. The truth is, by strength shall no man prevail. So we need heaven. We need the strength of the Most High to be able to get to where we are headed. So you need a vision so you can walk with God. You need a dream so you can walk with God. God does not work with people who are not heading anywhere. He works with people who have a vision, who have a, a dream, who know where they are headed, who know what their tomorrow holds. Those are the kind of people that God will work with. Heaven is committed. And not only is heaven committed to provide, heaven is committed to even protect and preserve you until that, 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 that dream comes to pass. Take for instance the life of Joseph. Joseph had close shapes with death. But the dream kept speaking. You can't die. You can't die. And heaven says it's true. This boy can't die until this dream is fulfilled. His brothers took him and said, let's kill him. The brothers conspired to kill him. One person spoke up and said, no. Let's not kill him. Let's rather sell him. And then he got to Egypt again. Another wahala. How can you be accused of rape by a general's wife? A slave. And in those days, when you're bought with money, they can kill you anytime. You are just like another furniture in the house. So the man, the man can just kill you. Nobody will question him. You are just a slave. And then you are now accused of trying to rape his wife. And you survive. The dream was speaking. All they did was just put him in the prison. Why? Because the dream was speaking. You can't die. And heaven is saying, yes, this boy can't die. Until this, this destiny is fulfilled. Until this dream is fulfilled. So I'm saying to you, you will not die until your dream is fulfilled. 
Your dream will speak for you and heaven will respond in the name of Jesus. So if it is provision and funding, once the dream is there, leave that to God. Leave it to God. And that's the reason why most of us don't even, we don't dare to dream. Why? Because we are looking at our pockets. You look at your paycheck, you look at your account, so let's, let's, let's just see what happens. Just dream. Just put the vision down. Commit to heaven, commit to God. And let's see what happens. Once again, I'm prophesying to you that you will dream big Amen. and your big dreams will come to pass Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lastly, so that we can go into prayers. When visions are realized, there is total fulfillment. There is fulfillment. It brings joy. It brings joy. And that fulfillment can never be quantified. I think there was a grandmother sometime, I think at 60 or, so, or 70, that graduated. I think that was from law school or somewhere. If you see her dancing, I don't even think she's going to go to any court. She might not represent anybody in any, but that was just a dream to ensure that she had this law certificate before she went to her grave. See her dance. She was dancing more than the people that are going to make money from the law they read. Why? Because dream fulfilled. Dream fulfilled. Vision actualized. You need to see the smile on, par on parents' faces when their children are getting married. They dance even more than the couple. They are so fulfilled. Dream fulfilled, vision realized. You need to see parents when their children are graduating from school. You see it on their faces. Yes, it was a rough, rough walk to this point, but it was worth it. It was worth it. I had to trek for this boy to go to school. I had to go without food for this boy to go to school. But now he has graduated. It is worth it. He remembers those days that he went hungry. Those years that he didn't have to buy a shirt just to pay school fees. And he's fulfilled and satisfied. It brings about fulfillment. And I said to you before that if there is nothing to die for, then you have nothing to live for. You should have something that drives you. You have something you are looking forward to. Don't just wake up every morning and eat and go to bed and wake again and eat and go to bed. That's not what you are made for. You are made for more than that. You are made for more than that. There's a lot God has loaded into you. There's a lot God has in your future for you to actualize. If you can only see it, envision it, walk with God, you will surely get there. As we prepare to pray, not all dreams come true. Not all visions are realized. Some dreams are scuttled. Some are abandoned. Some people just leave them midway. Some visions just remain vision, all true. They never, they never come to full realization. That is why you must contend for your dream. That's why we have this team this morning. Contend for your dream. Contend for your vision. You must stand your ground. For your dreams and for your visions to come to pass. You must stand, insist, enforce it, fight for it. And of course, you can do that physically and also do it uh, 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 spiritually. Physically, of course, diligence is required, perseverance is required, resilience is required, hard work is required. All of that, those are physical. But today we are concentrating on the su su supernatural, on the spiritual part of it. Because that is more important, more potent than anything you do physically. Because if you take God out of the equation, resilience will not work. Take God out of the equation, diligence and hard work will not work. If you take God out of the equation. It is vain to labor and go to bed eating the bread of sorrows. Vain. Except the Lord build a city. The labor in vain that build it. So it is vain. Except the spiritual is in place. Every other thing will be out of place. So the physical, of course, you know you need to work hard. You know you need to be disciplined. You know all that. You know you need to persevere. You need to be resilient in whatever you're doing. You know that. But then we also have to contend spiritually. And that's what we're going to do in prayers this morning. But then before we go into prayers, I want to believe if there's anybody here 
that have not met Jesus, the Lord of their life, I want to give you an opportunity to do that before we go into prayers. Hey, my faith is right.